Hi, I'm Tina Ann Middleton, author of the Forestville series. I'd like to welcome you today to the writing journey, where we inspire and encourage each other in the craft of writing. Today we'll be talking about gleaning the good from bad experiences. We'll be right back. It is a fact of life. Bad things happen all the time to everybody. It could range from minor annoyances, major disappointments to horrific catastrophes. But bad things happen. What do we do with them? Today I'd like to share with you a few of what could be seen as negative experiences in my life that God used to bring about something good. Now before we get started, I would like to ask you if you like what you see, please subscribe to The Writing Journey. Be sure that you ring the bell so that you get notification of future videos. Also, please follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and my Amazon author page. So let me see, let me start off with how we got, I think the best dog we've ever had. And we really have to go back to when I got two herniated discs, <clears throat> excuse me, two herniated discs in my neck. And you might ask, okay, how did anything good come from getting herniated disc in your neck. I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you. Uh, after a year of no insurance from the time that I hurt my neck, we got insurance, went to the doctor, he referred me to for an MRI, and then I got sent to a neurosurgeon. And the neurosurgeon was very conservative, so he sent me to physical therapy. One day, I was coming out of physical therapy, was not paying attention to where I was going. That curb had been there all along and I forgot it was there. And I twisted my ankle, sprained it real good. Um, you ever tried to drive a stick shift with a sprained ankle? It ain't easy. So I'll speed this up a little bit. I borrowed crutches from a friend of ours. Mentioned we were looking for a puppy. She told about her in-laws whose border collie had surprised them with a litter of puppies. The mama dog had had the babies under a piece of farm uh, machinery and hid them until they were old enough to walk. Wow, this was just what we wanted. So we contacted this family and when the puppies were old enough, we went and picked out our little puppy, Nikki. We had Nikki for 13 and a half years and like I said, I think she was the best dog we have ever had. Very well behaved, uh, very smart, very neurotic, but that's beside the point. So, and you might think, well, so, okay, that's just a little thing. Don't discount the little things though. They do help to provide a great deal of pleasure in life. Fast forward, like I said, 13 and a half years and Nikki had been getting sick to her stomach a lot. We took her to the vet. They examined her, they did ultrasound. The best they could see that way was something possibly wrong with her liver. But she got sicker and sicker and so we had to let them do surgery on her. And then another surgery. She still wasn't getting better. And the day came when we realized she wasn't going to and this was prolonging the agony and we had her put down. I had never put a dog down before and it broke my heart. I cried. Um, it was hard for my husband because he held her while the vet injected the, the medication. Well, that was a sad thing and you might again ask, how do you get anything good out of having to put your dog to sleep? After a few weeks, I started sitting down typing up little stories about Nikki, how we got her, her tricks, her neuroses, things like that. It made me feel better. And my husband told me, you know, you can 
self-publish on Amazon. I was like, hmm, that's an interesting idea. So we put together the book and we published it on Amazon, Nikki Dog. It's available both ebook and print. Well, as I was working on Nikki Dog, I thought about all those poems and essays I had collected through the years. And I put those together. And that's a book called Love and Grace. It's also available on Amazon in both ebook and print. So this was a good thing because I had written before, but I had not written for publication. I just wrote, wrote it down, showed it to a couple people, put it in a drawer and forgot about it. Um, but this got me started. It kind of got the wheels going because I had an idea for a book and I've told about this before and I would play with the idea and I would tell Darren about the idea and finally he told me, sit down and do an outline, write some notes. And I did. And that's where Mistaken Target came from. And while I wrote that one, I got the idea for Hidden Target and for the other books in the series. So we've gone from a herniated disc to a sprained ankle, getting a puppy, watching her grow up, having to put her to sleep, and writing for publication. Might seem simplistic to some, but to me, it's an example of God taking things that were bad experiences and using them for good. I can give you another example of this, though. I had seen a job at the VA that looked really terrific. And it looked like something I could, I could have a chance to get. So I applied for it. Didn't get it. And I was really disappointed. Until one day, a patient's wife came up. And we have these little pins that we give out. They're, they're called Armor of God pins. And she told me how her mother, who had died of breast cancer, had been studying the armor of God before she died. And this lady had gotten one of the pins, had recently found out that she now had breast cancer. And that pin was providing a lot of encouragement and comfort for her. It made her feel closer to her mother. If I had been in any other location in the hospital, she might not have picked up that pen, and she would have missed that, that source of comfort and encouragement. That really meant a lot to me, that God had used me where I am with those little pens that we give away to provide comfort for someone who's going through the trial of cancer. So. I later found out that job would not have been right for me anyway. I talked to someone who worked in that department and the job was not quite the way it had been described. I am a person who really goes for customer service and I would have had to totally give it up. I wouldn't have been doing customer service. I would really venture to say that God always brings good from bad. Now, I don't want to look like I'm trying to be simplistic or that I'm minimizing disasters or, or really bad things that happen to people. I don't want to look at something horrible like September 11th, 2001, and, and then find some little thing good that came from it. But what I would say is that for each of the individuals who are involved with that, I believe that God would minister to them with good things. He would use people to minister to them. That doesn't make up for the disaster, the loss, but it's a source of comfort and encouragement. And don't we all need that? Whether it's a minor annoyance or a deep grief, don't we need those bright spots of comfort? So. Yeah, sometimes we're not going to see the positive. The day that we put Nikki down, I didn't see the positive. 
Uh, the day I sprained my ankle, I did not see the positive. What I saw was my ankle turning colors I didn't know it could turn. But we have to be patient. We have to trust and believe that God will work it out. So how does this apply to writing? I mean, this is the writing journey. Well, when these things happen in your life, first you want to ask God, Lord, how do you want to use this? And, you know, if you ask God the hard questions, <laughs> they're not hard for him. They're just hard for us. So ask him what he wants you to get from it. Ask him how you can use it in your writing. Whether it's just to keep a journal for your own self or whether it's to write out your experience to share with someone else. There might be someone else who's going through the same thing who y'all could encourage each other. And that is priceless. So it's easy for us to focus only on the negative when disaster strikes or even a minor disappointment happens. Um, recently, I was looking forward to going to a concert for a group that I really enjoy listening to. And something has come up and I can't go. That's a disappointment. What can I do about it? Huh. I wonder if I could put that in a book. You might see that show up somewhere in the Forestville series. So hang in there. Know that God will bring about good from whatever is happening to you. And make sure that you keep writing. Y'all have a great week.